Hi everyone, good evening and thanks for joining me again for another Parenting SOS uh, to survive and thrive um, COVID-19. It sounds really extreme when I say it like that. Um, I'm Joy Marchese, I'm the founder of Positive Discipline and I'm here to share my experiences with you as a Positive Discipline trainer as well as um, an educator and a mother. So I have been um, applying Positive Discipline in classrooms, in corporate settings, um, as an educator for over 20 years. And uh, I'm really excited to be here. And I just have to be real for a minute because, um, you know, this is my second week doing Facebook Lives. I'm really enjoying it and I'm really grateful. I just want to share how grateful I am for all of you that are, um, that are watching, that are commenting, that are engaged. Um, it's really encouraging because this is not easy for me. Um, and, I, you know, we do a morning session at nine o'clock every morning, Monday through Friday, um, with my partner from I Grow Co on our Happy Resilient Kids uh, Facebook group. And uh, my daughter's there. So it's a lot easier for me when I see other people and I'm able to not just stare at myself and talk. Um, <laughs> this morning, I noticed just how bad my roots are. I don't know about you, but I, you know, I mean, who's washing their hair every single day? Uh, I was thinking today, when am I going to be able to get a haircut? So um, I just want to thank you for being there and for your supports. So for those of you that have been tuning in and for those of you that tuned in last night, um, we talked, oh, and thank you, <laughs> Omea um, from Egypt. Thank you for being on here and for your support. Um, last night, we talked about expressing feelings and needs, and I shared a tool that we use called Bugs and Wishes. So I'm wondering if anyone um, who's on the call live, if any of you had the time today during your busy schedules to teach Bugs and Wishes to your kids or to your partner, um, or other family members, and if you did, how did it go? And were you able to use a bug and a wish today? Um, I know that actually last night, my husband used a bug and a wish straight away with me, and he did it really effectively, and I really appreciated it. So um, if you did not see that episode, you might wanna go back on the Facebook page and, and check that out. Um, it's a really great tool to use uh, with people. So we're gonna move on to today's uh, topic, which is sibling rivalry. I've been having a lot of questions from parents that are really struggling at home, um, you know, with their kids and, and fighting and bickering. So first of all, I wanna know how many of you have more than one child in your home right now? Um, so how many of you have, I know Nermeen is on the call now and she used bugs and wishes with a friend. Um, I would love to hear how that went. And I know Nermeen has um, four children at home, right Nermeen, am I right? Two sets of twins. So I don't know, they're quite young. I don't know if they're fighting yet. Um, and Sam has three. So uh, you might be dealing with some sibling rivalry. How many of you are dealing with constant bickering and fighting and even like full fledged fights? So just put, you know, yes or no in the comments so that people can see that they're not alone because this is really um, common right now because we're, you know, we're stuck inside 24 seven. We're not used to being around each other uh, that much. So um, I only have one at home. And so I'm not dealing with the uh, sibling rivalry. However, based on my own life experience, um, I grew up with two older siblings and uh, we had many, many fights. And I can tell you based on that experience that I learned a lot from my siblings um, and from our fights. So I'd like to ask all of you, just reflect on your own experience with your own siblings and family members um, and maybe even your own kids. You know, What were you learning from your siblings? So take a moment to reflect and can you please put in the comments, um, what were you learning from your siblings? So I'll give you an example. From my sister, I really learned um, patience and compassion. Those are two um, qualities that she really, I think, had with me as an older sister. Um, we shared a room our whole lives and uh, we fought. We were best, best, best friends and you know, worst enemies when we fought. And I would say for my older brother, I probably learned how to um, fight back and stand up for myself and I learned how to ask for help. So I'm seeing that some of you are saying, yes, your kids are fighting. <laughs> um, so if you can go back 
to some of your um, experiences as a kid. Uh, let's see. Um, do, do, do. Okay, they're definitely, so is anyone learning anything? I'm not gonna hold on too long, but you can just reflect on that. So, um, you know, sometimes I worry with my daughter being an only child that she'll never get to experience, um, you know, fighting over the television or negotiating, getting the front seat in the car. You know, these are all actual life skills that we learn from our siblings. I can see, okay, here we go. I learned from my brother how to win. <laughs> Great. And um, Carrie learns that we we're not the same. Yeah, we're all unique and different. Um, and we don't have to be the same. We can kind of agree to disagree sometimes. I learned competitiveness and revenge. <laughs> okay. And I think Max, he, I don't know if he's on the call tonight, but I think Max, my husband, um, grew up as an only child. And I think he'd probably tell you he didn't grow up having fights. He probably didn't learn to fight until he met me. Um, so, and Sam said to tread carefully and accepting that my younger sisters were better than me at some things. So this is really, we can learn a lot from our siblings and from sibling rivalry even. Um, so because we can learn so much, it's actually important to sometimes allow the conflict to occur. We just have to think about keeping it at a tolerable level. Um, you know, so that nobody gets hurt. Um, so typically, let's think about what happens when, when siblings fight, right? Typically the parents, and they do this completely unconscious, it's not a conscious thing that they're doing, but they typically tend to pick on the same child every time. And when I say pick on them, I mean they might um, expect them, they might pick on them and blame them for starting the fight, like being the instigator, um, I was blamed a lot for that as a kid, actually. I think I just wanted to be noticed and seen. Um, but, um, or they might actually kind of um, expect them to be the one taking responsibility for resolving the fight. So, you know, they might just expect, for example, the older one. They might say every time to the eldest, you know, you're older, you should know better, or you should be a role model for your younger siblings, right? So they're putting that on the eldest. Um, or they might say to the youngest, you know, you're too young, leave your sister alone. So think about right now, just reflect on that. If you have children that are fighting, do you tend to kind of go to one all the time? Just take a moment to reflect. And again, we do this a lot, you know, subconsciously. Think back to your own childhood. You know, what does it bring up for you? Because when you are the one that's kind of picked on every time or the one that isn't picked on, okay, it's going to bring up regardless, lots of feelings and it's going to develop belief systems on either end, right? So if I'm the one feeling supported because my parent is constantly picking on um, my, my older sibling and saying, you need to be more responsible, I might actually start to believe I don't have to defend myself. Someone will be there to protect me, right? We're always learning and we're always making decisions. So really important to think about um, what children are feeling and what they're thinking and what they're deciding because that's all gonna play out. If you missed the episode about belief systems, um, go back and watch that and how we develop them. So you're probably thinking at this point, like, well, what do I do? Let them kill each other? You know, and I'm going to share with you three tools tonight that are designed to help um, resolve fights and actually uh, help with uh, develop cooperation. OK, and we call these the three B's. You may have noticed I have a poster um, behind me, which way do I point? Here we go. The three B's. OK, and these are three different ways that you can respond. The three strategies to respond when your children are fighting, when a fight is going on. And I just want to express the importance of not getting involved and letting them sort it out. OK, um, and I do see a question. I find it tough when to not intervene with my children, 11 months and four years old. I know Jane Nelson says to let them work it out from a young age, but my youngest is still a baby. I'm actually aware not to keep asking my older son what happened. Okay, um, 
or what he did. So that's a really good question. And I'm going to get to that at the end um, a little bit when we talk about age and, and even bullying that can sometimes take place with siblings. So hold off on that. And if I don't answer it at the end, please come back to me. Um, so here are your three Bs. And I would encourage you to try, the next time a fight breaks out, choose one and just try it out and just experiment with them and see what kind of works. So the first B is beat it, okay? That doesn't mean you're gonna dance around. Beat it means that the parent comes into the room or is in the room, you make sure the children see you, right? So you're like there, they see that you're there, and then you actually leave. Now, depending on how extreme the fight is, you might just leave the room, totally disappear. If you feel that it might get escalate a bit much, you might just go far enough away in the room and pick up a book and just totally not engage, but make sure they've seen you first. And what you'll notice that kids will do when you do that, it's really interesting to see, is you know, it's not as much fun to fight when you don't have an audience. And so, you know, children will tend to go, you know, the fighting, they'll see you, you'll walk away, and then all of a sudden they realize you're not there and they go, where'd mom go? Like, you know, what's, which, and all of a sudden, now the kids start to form an alliance and they're like, where'd she go? She's crazy. Why is she walking away? So beat it, I find to, to be really effective in that sense, especially when kids really want an audience and they're looking for attention, which can happen a lot right now. The second one is to bear it. And that means that the, the parent just stays. They stay in the room, they stay there, they observe. I mean, you might literally like, just like listen to one, listen to the other. Um, you do not get involved, no matter what. Unless fists are flying and someone's gonna get hurt, you don't get involved, you just stand there. That's kind of shocking as well because they're kind of, they will look at you and go, well, hello, aren't you gonna do anything about this? You know, especially if they're used to you coming in and, and, and trying to fix it, okay? So that is Barrett. And the next one, this was, I think, this was my mother's favorite. I think she did this pretty much every time my siblings and I fought, which is boot them out. And that can be done in a few ways, okay? What it means is you remove both children from the scene, okay? Treating them the same. Um, and it might, you might make a comment, and I'm just being mindful of comments. I just want to make sure I'm not missing. Um, you might say something like, it's okay to fight, and you need to go do this outside. Okay? You might say, um, okay, you know what? You guys go to separate rooms until you're ready, you're calm, and you're ready to stop fighting and focus on a solution. And tomorrow night we'll be talking about focusing on solutions and problem solving. Or you might say, and this is what my mother did, especially with my sister and I, because we shared a room, go to another room. So she would say, go to your room together and come out when you have solved the problem and you're ready to stop fighting. And I think, and I just remember my sister and I going to our room, we would like fight it out. And then, you know, five minutes later, we're best friends again, playing with Barbie dolls, you know? Um, so, you know what, we really learned a lot from that. So I would encourage you, to next time choose one of the three B's, experiment with them. If you forget what they are, um, you can uh, rewatch this or uh, take a screenshot of the poster so you don't forget them. Make your own poster of the three B's. Um, and Sam is saying, I remember doing this role play on the course. It was so powerful. How can I have forgotten? Sam, thank you so much for bringing that up because some of you that are on here have taken the live positive discipline course. And, um, you know, this is not rocket science. This is really common sense stuff. It's stuff that we know, but it's stuff that we tend to forget, boom, when we flip our lid, because all of our knowledge, right, our problem solving, our, our ability to really um, think about solutions and, and think critically, our high level thinking is totally disconnected. And we are in our emotions, we're in our fight, flight, freeze, um, our reptilian brain. So we forget, especially when fight, fights happening, we, our safety radar goes off immediately. Um, Nermeen, to answer your question, what if they are hitting each other? And this goes back to Lee a little bit. I'm actually going to read a quote from Jane Nelson because I want to say it as well as she said it in the parents manual. This comes from the positive discipline, the teaching parents manual. So this might help a bit. Not getting involved in a particular fight is not abandonment. 
Occasionally, parents have memories of their own parents just leaving them at the mercy of their violent siblings. This is not what we're advocating. It is the parent's job to teach that hurting people is not okay. Unfortunately, this lesson is rarely learned when people, parents intervene in fights by picking sides. So in conclusion, what we're really saying here is that when you interfere by taking sides, you actually create more sibling rivalry, okay? And it usually lasts a lot longer. So we have a tool card here, which is put them in the same boat. So I don't know if you can see that. I'll read that to you. Um, it says, put kids in the same boat. Instead of taking sides when ch children fight, treat them the same. Number one, give them a choice. So you can say to your kids, um, kids, do you want to both go out in the cool out, go sit in the cool out space and calm down? Or do you want to put this on the family meeting agenda? Right. You give them a choice so that they can cool down just to separate them. Now, we will be talking about family meetings, bringing it all together, everything we've been talking about the past two weeks. We will be talking about that on Thursday. So don't miss that. Um, it's a really great time to actually, if you're dealing with a lot of sibling rivalry, to bring it up at a family meeting. Show faith, and we'll, I'll bring this, read this tool card tomorrow, but show faith. Let me know when you have identified the problem and have ideas for solutions. So you kind of put it back on them. And the last one, leave. Fighting will diminish significantly when you stop taking sides, so long as you are having regular family meetings to teach problem solving skills. Okay, so if they are hitting one another, um, you know, again, I learned from my brother you know, how to stick up for myself. And I don't mean physically fight back, but how to ask for help when I needed it. And, you know, we always think that the person who got hit is the victim. And in my case, sometimes I was the instigator. Um, as long as there is no, you know, you have to, you don't want there to be bloodshed, right? And how do kids learn that hitting hurts by experiencing it, right? So there are times where you can kind of play it, let it play out a little bit. And you want to teach children to self-advocate for themselves. Ouch, that hurt. And at a moment of calm, after everyone's calm, you go back and you talk about how does it feel to be hit? How did you feel after you hit so-and-so? You know, did you mean to hurt them? And all that, and you talk it through. So it is, you still have to teach them hitting is not okay. And can they sort it out in that moment? Okay, and if not, I mean, then to answer your question, you have to separate them. That's when you boot them out. And if you're worried about physical, you know, um, but you don't boot them out together and put them in the same room like my mom put us in our bedroom. You actually put them in separate rooms um, so that they're not together until they cool down. So I hope that helps. And Lee, to answer your question about the 11 month old and the four year old. So, um, you do have to, the 11 month old is still a baby and you do have to protect them. They can't protect themselves. So they can learn and you can deal with it through talking, you can still model through talking to the four-year-old. The four-year-old is still learning that self-regulation piece. Um, and one of the things that you can do, there's a few tools that really help, which is you know redirecting them to something else, distracting them in the moment and then going back. And of course, supervising, supervising them and trying to catch it before it happens. My mom used to always say, she's not on tonight, she's usually on every night. My mom used to say that she could tell by the laughter when it was gonna escalate into a fight. So you can kind of tell intuitively, sometimes as a parent, when something's gonna happen. So with your four-year-old, if you can redirect them, um, it, you know, in the moment so that it doesn't happen. And if it does happen, you know, talk about the feelings. If you didn't hear the episode on the feelings, you can go back to that where they can use a bug and a wish. You know, maybe the 11 month old keeps knocking down her, her tower and that's really bugging her. And she wished that, wishes that he would be, you know, in another space. So there's lots of tools that can help um, with that. I hope that this does help. Um, I'm going to end it here tonight and just remind you of a couple of things. So tomorrow night, we're going to be talking about problem solving and focusing on solutions. Thursday night is family meetings and Friday is live Q and A with Dr. Jane Nelson, uh, the co-founder of positive discipline. She's written over 20 plus books. Uh, she is a 
in my mind, she's a guru. She's been my mentor. And she has seven children, 22 grandchildren, and I think she's up to 14 great grandchildren. So I think she has a bit of experience that she can share with us on Friday. So please um, message me in the comments your questions that you have for Jane on Jane and I on Friday, and we'll try to make sure we answer. We might go a little bit longer on Friday so that we can answer everyone's questions. So until tomorrow night, be well, be calm, stay safe, and thank you for joining me. Take care. Bye.